Today's presentation is on language and meaning construction. Hi guys, we are here to educate you on how to think critically. After this lesson, we would be able to make concrete and reasonable arguments and also pass a judgment without being partial or being pitiful and also be able to tell when an argument is being treated unfair. Let's start with ambiguity. Ambiguity is a word, phrase or a statement which contains more than one meaning. Ambiguous words or statements lead to vagueness and confusion and shape the basis for instances of unintentional humor. For instance, it is ambiguous to say, I rode a black horse in a red pyjamas because it may lead us to think the horse was wearing a red pyjamas. The sentence becomes clear when it is structured as wearing red pyjamas, I rode a black horse. Similarly, same words with different meaning can cause ambiguity, such as for example, John took off his trousers by the bank. It is funny if we confuse one meaning of bank, which is a building, to another meaning, which is an edge of a river. Context usually resolves any ambiguity in such cases. Next is vagueness, the imprecise or unclear use of language, a word without clarity. Although vagueness often occurs unintentionally, it may also be employed as rhetorical strategy to avoid dealing with an issue or responding directly to a question. It is an essential feature of the language. Vague or abstract words can create wrong or confusing meaning in receiver's mind. They state a general idea but leave the precise meaning to the receiver's interpretation. We are now on definitions. Definitions are very useful in explaining and classifying meaning. We have kinds of def definitions. We have defendum. Defendum is a word that is being defined. Reporting definitions is a current but not old or previous. It deals with evaluating the meaning of the word and they are not consistent shouldn't be too wide or narrow. Unless the stipulate definition is used to assign a new meaning, a term, whether or not the term has an existing meaning. If the stipulate definition is accepted, then the term is used in the new way that is prescribed. For instance, GMC means Ghana made cars. Once it is accepted, we can say that Kantanka produces GMCs. Interesting. Stipulated definitions are not just for secret codes and acronyms. Let's move on to precising definitions. These go beyond ordinary usage in such a way as to eliminate troublesome uncertainty concerning borderline cases. For example, a dictionary may define the term student as 1 anyone attending educational institution of any type. Second will be anyone who studies something. Now we are done with definitions. Let's move on to the next language and meaning construction. We have consistency and inconsistency. We say that a statement or a set of statements is logically consistent when it involves no logical contradiction. Logical contradiction is a conjunction of a statement. In logic, it is a fundamental law, that is, the law of non-contradiction, that a statement and its denier cannot both be true at the same time. For instance, I know I promise to show up today, but I don't see why I should come if I don't feel like it. We have implications. Implications 
it implies that as we are thinking where do this thinking lead us to so when you say something you imply to certain other things for example if you promise to give me money you imply to keep it or you are implied to keep it equivalence this is a type of informal fallacy where there is an ostensible similarity between two items or things but a closer examination are in fact not equivalent the two items may be sharing something in common with one another for example Sakode and Shatawali are musicians and they are all popular since they are all musicians and popular doesn't mean they have the same behavior sing the same song or both of them are from one tribe we are moving on necessary truth and necessary falsehood with necessary truth is a statement which is true and remains true under reinterpretation of its logical constant example will be human beings cannot survive without oxygen this statement is true and remains true under rare interpretation necessary falsehood it's a preposition that is false in all possible world example man can travel to the sun and survive this is a fallacious statement since scientists have come up with facts that the sun is the hottest object on earth and no, no living thing can survive on it. Contingent truth and contingent falsehood. Contingent truth is a truth preposition that could have been false. For example, quartz are small and colored. Next one will be contingent falsehood. It's a preposition that could have been true. Example, if snow is white, then grass is green. Again, uses and mention. Uses in this context means to make something serve one purpose. Example would be use a saw and other tools for building. Now let's come to mention, to define or cite formally for specific act or achievement, name, specify or speak of. Example, Joshua mentioned that some lecturers in Central University lecture very well. Here we can say that Joshua has mentioned specifically that some lecturers in Central University lecture very well. In summary, or well, one would say in conclusion, the study of language and definition is very useful, especially in reading because it makes understanding very clear. Thank you very much for listening.